Howdy folks, Kel Kellogg here. I'm coming to you from my backyard. It's a breezy day and it is time for another uh, edition of the School of Fishing. This is the daily edition. And today I wanna talk about Dodgers. Now if you walk into a store that sells trout and salmon gear, you're gonna see a whole bunch of Dodgers from a whole bunch of different manufacturers. And I can tell you right now, almost all of them work. Probably all of them work at one time or another. Um, having said that, my favorite all-around Dodger, the one that I rely on more than any other Dodger on the market, is the tried and true Sling Blade Dodger. Now you'll see these being made by a bunch of different imitators. I go for the, the genuine article. I get my Sling Blades from the folks at Max Lure. Um, and this is just such a great Dodger because of its versatility. And let's talk a little bit about that. You know me, I'm a power troller. I like to troll fast. In its normal configuration, right out of the package, the sling blade is a dodger that you can take up to three and a half miles an hour, maybe more depending on what you're pulling off the back of it. Um, if you wanna go slower, say you wanna target kokanee, what you wanna do is take your dodger. This is one I've actually got set up for fishing um, slower for fishing for kings it's the pink glow version this is a six inch dodger and you see let me show it to you next to a standard six inch dodger notice that this one here has a little cup in it this one here is pretty straight what you want to do if you want to go slower you want to get more action out of your dodger just grab it like that and just start putting a bend in it just work it down Test it in the water a few times and make sure you're getting the action you want. But you can put a significant bend in these. If you want to go one mile an hour, just keep working that. Work that curve in there until you got a nice arch in the back of that blade. And you're going to get the action you want at the speed you want to troll. Get tired of going slow or you want to, you know, it's another day and you want to troll fast. Just straighten her back out and you're ready for fast trolling once again. So... Sling blades come in a bunch of different sizes. I'll kind of break down the sizes I use. <clears throat> this is the, I believe this is the four inch version. This is the size I use a lot when I'm targeting kokanee. Certainly it works for trout. I don't use these that much when I'm targeting trout. And I only use them about half the time when I'm trolling for kokanee. I used to use this size a lot, but what I found is, is that the six inch version works just as well if not better than the four inch version even when i'm targeting kokanee a lot of times if i'm targeting trout the six inchers are my go-to if i'm targeting landlocked kings absolutely hands down six incher is the way to go now if you're going out on the ocean the big magnum this is either an eight or nine incher i think it's listed as nine inches if you're out in the ocean targeting salmon this is a great blade to have, but it also has applications in lakes. On the ocean, I like nothing better than to run a hoochie behind it, or better yet, a hoochie with a strip of uh, anchovy filet on it. And uh, I just run that, I like to run it kind of shallow, you get a tremendous amount of flash off that blade, and that is my favorite color, the chrome and green tape. Now in lakes, believe it or not, a lot of times when the bite is slow, especially if I'm seeing marks, a lot of times I'll go out to like Folsom and my sonar unit, it'll look like there's a war going on down there. There's schools of bait and I can see hard marks and I can't get a bite. Well, my go-to in that situation is I put a hoochie or a small humdinger behind the big Magnum version and drop it down there just to see what'll happen. And a lot of times this big blade will, you know, it'll spark some life into inactive fish. They'll come to look and you can get a few strikes that way. Another thing you can do with this big blade that I never see anybody doing, but uh, I do it once in a while. Everybody talks about ball trolls. That's where you take a, a, a line of, of flashers, you know, your standard rolling flashers, and hook them on the ball of your downrigger and then use a clip to run your lures above and behind those ball trolls. Well, that's all fun and games, but what I like to do, I either take a, a light piece of paracord or like a, got some mosquitoes here, or like an 80 pound test piece of braided line. I'll put a short dropper on this, like maybe 24 to 30 inches. 
I'll run this big blade off the ball. Nothing behind it. So it's just there doing its thing. I'll use it like a ball troll and then I'll run a spoon or a hoochie or some rig bait or whatever just above it and just behind it. And you'd be amazed how many fish this draws in. I mean, when I'm doing that, I can see them on the sonar screen. Even if they don't hit, I'll see fish streaking into the gear just to check out what's making all that disturbance and flash. So anyway, that's a few things you can do with these super versatile blades. So I always have one of these in my tackle box, whether I'm trout fishing, and especially when I'm out looking for ocean salmon, or if you want to get in on that bay trolling bite, dynamite for hell of it. Dynamite blade for hell of it. Just rig it up like that, put a frozen herring or a frozen anchovy behind it with a couple hooks in it, keep it about a foot, two feet off the bottom, and uh, you'll, you'll be yelling fish on. You'll be having hell of it for dinner. Anyway, so back to, back to my standard, my six inchers. I've got my favorite colors right here. These things come in a whole bunch of different colors. First, a couple words about kokanee though before I even get into that. Most of the time when you're fishing for rainbows, you don't need to worry about scaring a fish. Chrome, chrome, and more chrome. Chrome is great. They love it. Um, kokanee, early in the morning, chrome can be a great option. But too much flash will often put kokanee off the bite. And that's when you want to break out the brass dodgers, the tarnished dodgers. This is one I've been using for kokanee fishing. See how tarnished the back is? That was brass and it's even more tarnished now. I've had it for several years. And the top, that's your diamond watermelon pattern. It's very subtle. So sun is high, maybe it's glassy, the kokanee bite shuts down. You run something like this green UV chrome blade, <clears throat> you're going to scare those little guys out of their skin and they're not going to hit. So you want to bust out something more subtle, something like that. And you might have to downsize. You might have to downsize to a brass 4-inch model or something like that. That's kokanee. I spend most of my time targeting trout. So, like I say, most of the time, and, and, and kings, I'm running the 6-inch blade. The watermelon pattern. That's a very good blade. That's probably my number two choice. Number one choice, right here. UV green, chrome, dynamite. Sometimes I run it in UV blue. Those are kind of interchangeable for me. Ton of flash, ton of visibility, lots of action. Dynamite dodger. Number one dodger for trout, right there. The UV green. For kings, if kings are on the menu, I want to fish, say I'm going to Folsom or Shasta, and I want to fish a hoochie or a coconut or, or something like that. Number one choice, the hot pink with the glow tape, chrome back, dynamite blade. I've caught so many big kings on this. I can think of at least two at Shasta that I've caught that were over five pounds on this with a blue and white hoochie behind it. Um, if you're out there and the king bite's a little slow, Here's a secret for you. Take this blade, put it on your line. Run back a leader about three times as long as that, maybe two and a half times. So we're talking about a 16 inch leader. Chanel two hooks on there, two octopus hooks. Take a tray bait anchovy and cut a filet about so long, you know, about two thirds of the length of the anchovy if they're good sized anchovies. Take that filet, pin it on the first hook through the, through the the broad end, and then take that second hook and just pin it through the fillet near the tail. Doesn't need to rotate, doesn't need to roll. What you want is just a little bit of action from the blade transferred to that bait. You want an action like, just where it's like pull, 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 every time that dodger moves. Doesn't have to roll or anything else. They'll come in there, they'll get a whiff of that scent, they might get a little taste. If you see some of this action in your on your downrigger rod, don't do anything, just wait. It's just a matter of time. They're gonna feel that, taste that real meat, they're gonna get it in their mouth, and you're gonna have a king on when nobody else is catching anything. Remember to rig that on 10 pound fluorocarbon line, two and a half to three Dodger links behind the blade. I guarantee you, that is gonna work for you when the bite is difficult. So, and then on the trout front, say we're running this blade right here. If you're running a lure that has no action, a hoochie say, you want to be in that two and a half to three times the dodger length behind the blade. That's where you want to be. And don't go overly light on your line. 
you want the Dodger transmitting action to the lure and, and it's more effectively done with stiff line. I would go with 10 or 12 pound fluorocarbon. So that's what you want to do in that situation. If I'm running a spoon or something that already has action, I stick with the same heavy 10 to 12 pound fluorocarbon. I'm trying to catch big fish. So I want some stout line and it's not going to hurt you at all. But if you're running a spoon, say you're running a humdinger or a cripple lure or you know, a cast master, whatever it is, you can lengthen that leader out all the way out to like 48 inches, 36 inches, about 30 inches of it's about my standard when I'm trolling a spoon, 30 to 36, because the spoon already has action. The Dodger, what you're hoping it's gonna do is with the flash and the, uh, the vibration, the pulses it's putting out, you just want it to draw a trout within proximity to it. It's thinking, huh, sounds like there's some trout over there feeding, I'm gonna go check it out. And the next thing you know, they see a flat and they see a minnow, boom, that's the trigger. It gives them the impression of trout feeding on bait. Now, that is obviously a more effective presentation at a lake that has bait. We're talking about Shasta. Don Pedro, Folsom, places where the trout suspend in open water around schools of pond smelt, around schools of shad. I always tell people, when you're trolling for rainbow trout in a big impoundment like Shasta, it has more in common with ocean salmon trolling than it does with traditional trout trolling. That's not the situation where you want to be trolling a wedding ring at one mile an hour. That's a high mountain lake deal. That's a completely different bite. When you're in those big impoundments and the fish are feeding on bait, put on a big sling blade, go quick. Three, three and a half miles an hour. Get a spoon back there or a hoochie back there that gives the impression of a bait fish and work around those schools of bait. Not in the schools, around the edges, over the top, and particularly underneath the schools. Um, that's about it. I'll tell you a quick story about this blade right here. I was at Shasta with my wife. We were going back in for the night and my sonar unit lit up with a ball of bait that was obviously being assaulted by fish and it was down probably 40, 50 feet. I came back around. I got two lines out. Um, can't remember the spoons. One I think was a silver horde and the other one was a humdinger, I believe. Anyway, I dropped these down and Gina got a 24 inch rainbow, a three pound king and a six pound brown and every one of those fish came from underneath that bait ball and then I lost the ball and it was over that fast. But that's what finding bait in a big lake can do for you and trolling aggressively with sling blades. Anyway, I've rambled here. Get yourself some sling blades, get some bright colored ones, get some dull colored ones. Concentrate on the six inch size if you're just going to buy one blade or two blades. Get them on your line and you're going to catch fish. Get out on the water. Please hit that subscribe button and thank you so much for supporting my channel and supporting the Fish Differ magazine. Anyway, I'll catch you next time. This is Kel Kellogg signing off. You folks have a great day and uh, I'll see you out on a lake somewhere real soon. Thanks a lot guys.